People always think actors are neurotic, and, and maybe we are, but I think we're just human beings who are put into the most insecure situation imaginable, which brings up every issue imaginable, and then you have to deal with it. You know, you can't just push it down there and pretend it doesn't exist. So uh, actors are always in some form of therapy or working on themselves. But I, I find, like I said before, that uh, for me, this journey has been more than just being famous or making lots of money because I had no clue that I could ever be known by anybody. I mean, I, I did not look at television and go, oh, I want to be an actor, I want to be famous, I want to make lots of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. I basically was going, wow, you know, I could never do that. I could never be up in front of people. I could never act. I could never do any of those things. And I used to think of those actors and performers and singers as the magical people, the blessed people. They seem to somehow be tuned into something that maybe many of us have either forgotten or detached from. And I wanted to have some of that magic in my life. And it kind of led me on a journey slowly to, uh, to an acting class that had a sign over it that said, no acting, please. I thought, an acting class that says, no acting, please. Very interesting. The class was really just away from me out of a big hole that I was living in. And it kind of gave me a, a portal into another way of living. And I just found the acting process extraordinary. I mean, it was like touching God to me. And I honestly, it was never about on going for a career. I just loved going to class, loved doing the exercises, loved learning about myself, learning about life. And when somebody mentioned that, hey, you should, uh, you know, go for an audition. I go, what do you mean, audition me? You know, and they said, yeah, you know, there's auditions and there's parts and stuff like that. And I never associated the two. They were all there for career. I was there to get help. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, I got a lot of help until I got to the point where I started to enjoy the process of acting. And it slowly led me to New York, starting doing plays, uh, led me to this gentleman over here, Jack Stauffer. Um, and we went on All My Children for three years, and that was the turning point in my life because finally I could take my parents to the bank and pay them back every cent I ever borrowed from them. And you don't know what a joy it is to pay your parents back because when you want to be an actor, everybody looks at you and thinks you're nuts. Nobody takes you seriously until you make money, until you're on television. And so you're not validated by anybody in the family. You hate going back to Christmas. You hate sitting, you know, it's horrible because everybody goes, well, what are you doing? Oh, I'm moving up the corporate ladder. What are you doing? I'm an attorney. What are you doing? I'm a doctor. What are you doing, Richard? Uh, I'm an actor. What are you on? Uh, until you're on a show, you're nobody. And so when I finally got all my children, it was such a validation because for the first time, my parents looked at me and I was somebody. They took me seriously. And I took him to the bank, paid him off, took him out to dinner, had the best time of my life. And that was the turning point where I actually began to realize that maybe I could actually be an actor in this business. And it led me from one show to the next, to, um, to uh, Dead Man's Curve, to um, Streets of San Francisco, to Battlestar Galactica. And again, the journey has been more than an actor. I think no matter what, it's been a journey of my soul. It's been an acid test of my spirit and it has taught me more about life, about human beings, about compassion, because we all have to step into other people's lives and look through their eyes and gain a compassion and understanding and forgiveness for what we all go through. So acting has given me a lot, and it almost doesn't even matter where it goes. For me, the journey and the process is so much more important than the end result. So I, yeah, thank you. something really good. <laughs> I can't say what I was going to say because it's... No, I had a crush on Fred Astaire. <laughs> Big time. Big time. That explains I everything. Him. I just, yeah, I did everything. I had a crush on everybody. I had a crush on all the girls. They were... Because it's true, they were all very appealing. But, but Lorette and I had something special. <laughs> which we have never really quite been able to either talk about or deal with. <laughs> I'm a bit hurt. I just discovered tonight she met her husband while we we're doing the show, and I thought, because we, we had, well, we always had 
the possibility of consummation hanging in the air. So, you know, and it made it extra more fun to go to work. Because, you know, do as you can, yeah. But I think a lot of it had to be work. We weren't playing. Dirt. We weren't playing so Maybe, stupid. Maybe you better stop. <laughs> Reminds me of what you said 25 years ago. Replay, replay. Uh, I think I would, I would catch a break eventually. <laughs> Lorette, did he ever really kiss you in any of those things? Did what? Did he ever really kiss you? I mean, like stick no, his tongue was, in you? No. Oh my God! Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Come on. But you know, discriminating discriminate yeah, people want to know. I think you're so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I gonna answer park. that. Okay. I'm not gonna answer that. No, I did park my car in her garage. A fan That's asked not me. naughty. <laughs> I feel this is deteriorating. <laughs> we, we need some good kind of. Uh, uh, yes, you you parked your car in my garage at my house. I mean, he was using my house because I wasn't there, and I don't remember that part. But. I'd like to at this time thank our panel for being here today with us. If you could